Morning everyone, welcome back. Yesterday we looked at a revised 40 red green 40 card deck and at the end of it we were sort of wondering about like solitaire magic. Is there a way to play single player magic the gathering? So I did a quick search and came up with a few ideas. There's obviously gold fishing which I think is what we had been doing in our revised 40 videos where you just run out a few turns and see what cards you get in it and see if it, um, you know, is playable. Uh, I think there's a, a format called Brawl, which I don't know too much about, but it uh, has, might also be a two player version where you kind of uh, dig through cards in like a hundred card deck, um, kind of just pass the time. Um, I did find on the Magic, on Wizards website, an article that was written in 2010 about solitaire magic. So I'll put the link to this article in the description below, and you can read all about how to play solitaire magic according to Wizards. This was printed in Duelist issue number 34, um, and it's uh, it's actually quite extensive. So it's it it's it's designed to be just like solitaire, like you'd play with a 52 card deck. Um, I think previously we looked at some poker decks, magic poker decks. Um, you could probably play solitaire with those more traditionally where you make these stacks of cards and you try to eliminate the stacks of solitaire cards. So we looked at, I'm gonna look at this version. I'm kind of intrigued by it to see if it's actually a functional version of magic that you can play that uses the card rules or you know what's it all about. So the first thing it says is that it doesn't, solitaire magic won't improve your timing skills or the menacing glare that intimidates opponents. It will, however, improve your card memory skills, including your ability to estimate how likely you are to draw a card based on how many cards you've seen. So I guess it's a way to maybe test your deck and see how many cards are in your deck, uh, if you have enough creature cards and to land cards, something like that. Um, if anyone's played this version of Solitaire Magic, let me know, put it in the comments and um, let me know what you think. Uh, any suggestions on if it works or not. Um, to, sh to set up the table, you would take your deck and shuffle it. Um, deal out seven traditional solitaire stacks. The first one has to has one card, the second has two cards, and so on. As long as a stack contains any cards, the top card is always turned face up. So this is kind of um, what they are showing in the stacks down here. So we'll take, we'll just, for the purpose of this solitaire video, we'll use our revised 40 red green deck that we looked at yesterday. We'll just give this a shuffle and we'll, we'll see if this solitaire, um, if it works. I do have an idea for how to make it more like a, a playable solitaire that you can play with yourself, um, you know, by yourself so that you can actually test out the, the power toughness of your deck and see if it is a viable option to play with. Um, I'll maybe think about that and work on that a little bit and see if we can do a different video on a, on a more functional version of Solitaire. But this, does, this reminds me of like a memory game um, where you're trying to eliminate s matching cards, um, cards that match, that kind of thing. So let's see. How much room we need? We actually probably need a lot of room, actually. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot of room. So there's there's our first stack. There's our second stack. Okay, so seven stacks of magic cards, just like that. Now let's move these over one sec. There, seven, and then you double up the second row like that. This one's face up like so, and then you start the third row face up, then down. I think that's it. Fourth row, fifth row, looking pretty good here. Sixth row, juggernaut. 
and seventh row. Wow, so we got all of lightning bolts. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Um, what else do you have? So you would, this is your solitaire deck. Um, there's no life totals, you don't worry about that. There's a graveyard. The goal of the game is to eliminate all the cards in these seven stacks before cycling through your deck three times. So with a 40 card deck, we're left with uh, this many cards, which is uh, like 12. So um, you'd only get to go through this deck three times. I'm guessing they want you to use a 60 card deck and then uh, you'll have maybe a little longer to try to solve the, the solitaire stacks here. Otherwise, the mandatory plays, they want you to move the lands up to the top of the stack where you would put the aces. And each different land type is placed in its own pile. If more than one copy of a card is ever face up in your hand, you move it to a stack with that card on top. In other words, if two stacks have Herloon Minotaur on top, you must move one Minotaur to the top of the other one. So there's these seven stacks, which you're going to try to get rid of. Um, if there's more than one card face up on a stack, which could happen if you've drawn multiple copies of a card, all of those cards are in play. For the purposes of card text, you don't control any of the cards. However, you may play these cards by paying their cost as described below. A card on top of a stack may be targeted as if it were in play, in a player's hand, or even as if it were being cast. Uh, da, 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 da. In solitary magic, attacks are declared against a stack, not a player. The magic creature combat rules apply. Your creature is considered to be attacking, and all creatures in the pile are considered to be blocking. Since there are no turns, creatures do not suffer from summoning sickness. Remember this will usually be one creature, unless you're facing a stack of identical creatures like the Herlin Minotaurs above. Um, sacrifice your lands. Instead of playing your lands to for, by tapping them for mana, you sacrifice them to generate mana, and the sacrificed lands go to the top row where the aces would be to the graveyard. Uh, in order to play a card or an ability, you must sacrifice a land that produces at least one colored mana of the card you've pl you're playing, all other costs are ignored. If a source provides more than one mana, the extra is lost. For instance, sacrificing a swamp to play a dark ritual will only allow you to play one spell or ability, requiring at least one black mana, I think. The three trips through the library, as in normal magic, you draw cards from your library, which I think is this library, and then you'll have your hand over here. And you also don't lose the first time you've drawn all your cards. Instead, you go through the deck three times before you lose. Place the cards you've gone through into a discard pile, which we'll put over there. When your library is empty, the discard pile becomes the library again, unless you've gone through the library three times. Library searching effects can still be played. Harrow, for example, would allow you to search your library for two basic lands put them in play, and in this case, the lands would go directly to the appropriate land stacks above the seven stacks. So you do one permanent at a time. No one can ever control more than one permanent. Uh, your hand is a precious resource. Of the three cards you draw at one time, only the top card is revealed. That card is considered your hand. If your hand matches a card on top of a stack, it must be moved to the stack, uh, and if you have to discard your hand, place the top card from your hand in the discard pile. If an effect directs you to draw, take the top card from your library and make it the top card of your hand. Effects that return cards to your hand, put those cards on top of your hand in any order you choose. Um, let's see. Aim for the graveyard. This works the same as magic graveyard. All destroyed cards are placed in the graveyard, including lands sacrificed to pay for spells and abilities. Remember, your goal is to eliminate the seven stacks, so you want to put a lot of cards in the graveyard. And then the rest of the rules, since there are no turns, anything that happens at the beginning or end of any phase is just ignored. Abilities that are played during a phase can be used at any time. As always, once you use an ability, the permanent is sacrificed. There's no life totals. Damage is of no consequence to you, though it still gets rid of the creatures. 
Uh, if an ability requires you to pay life, you must discard a card from your library for each life you wish to pay. Um, there's some helpful hints at the bottom. Try to clear stacks away early. If there are two copies of the same card on top of a stack, um, such as this, we have three lightning bolts. It says, move the one on the shorter stack to the other copy. This will help you eliminate a stack and reduce the chance of a card in your hand matching the card on a stack. Um, avoid using cards from your hand. The more cards you use from your hand, the less mana you'll have available to play the cards to try to eliminate. And remember that you can play face-up cards as if they were in your hand. So basically you have like seven cards. That's your hand, I see. And then you also have some mana hidden on, in the face-down cards. And so you're going to want to try to uncover those so that you can cast those lands. I get it. Uh, before drawing cards, try to eliminate as many cards in the stacks as possible using the resources already on the table. Remember, only three trips through your library, so be careful when playing a permanent. You need to have a way to get rid of it, unless you want to control it and nothing else for the remainder of the game. Not sure how about the, how a card works in solitaire. Make your own rules. It's solitaire. After all, who's going to argue with you? All right, so this is going to be our foray into... Uh, solitaire magic we're gonna try this once probably once and only once I don't think um, this is super useful but we'll we'll see what happens so this is our library of 12 cards we're gonna draw three and then we'll turn the first one face up so that is our hand three card hand so to speak I'll put that there put that there this is like so basically this is our solitaire magic single player starting thing. Basically, think of this as your seven card hand, your library, and the top card that you drew from your library to, to have like eight cards. Uh, the first thing we'll do, I think we will want to move, um, let's see, something about, whoa, let's see. It says move duplicate cards from the shorter stacks to the longer stacks. If there are two copies of the same card on top of a stack, move one on the shorter stack to the other copy. Got it. Okay, so because I think if you clear a stack, you can probably put other cards in that stack. So I think we're just gonna start by putting these three lightning bolts. We're gonna just double these up over here on that lightning bolt, which lets us uncover these cards. I see, yeah, that's kinda it's just like solitaire works. Okay, so now we have, we can play cards um, and cast permanents and things like that. So this is our library, this is our hand. We have three cards in our hand. I think when you go through this card, you must like go to the next card in your hand, I think. Um, I'm gonna say we probably can tap, uh, let's say we can tap this forest. We're gonna use the forest. Let me put that up there. We're gonna use the forest to cast the soul ring. That's a permanent. And then we're gonna use the soul ring. Um, where's our discard pile? Uh, graveyard's over here. So soul ring goes in the graveyard. Let's just do it sideways so you can kind of see it down there. And we're gonna use the soul ring to cast this juggernaut. So juggernaut goes into the, the active zone. This is permanent, permanent zone here. And then you need to like cast spells to maybe kill your permanents. Something like that. Um, so we've cast Juggernaut. We'll turn this, turn these cards around. Uh, now we want to kill Juggernaut because it's I don't know. I'm not sure how that works. Juggernaut's in play. Um, I guess maybe if you attack, it kills the card. I can only attack once. So I'm not really sure. But uh, so let's say. I don't know. Let's say we want to fireball, or we can actually lightning bolt juggernaut. So let's um, we'll tap this mountain for red. We're gonna cast lightning bolt, and we're gonna we're gonna destroy juggernaut. So those go in our graveyard. Then we can also uncover oops, that. Then so we're, I think we're doing pretty good. Um, we want to cast this mana flare, I believe. So let's tap this mountain. 
to play a red spell. It says you don't need the exact number of mana costs, you just need something in the mana. So we have to sacrifice a red uh, in order to do that one. So that's empty. Then we uncover this card in this stack and we see giant growth. So that's gonna be interesting. Um, I also think we could probably move cards from our hand to the board. So I think we can put the forest there. Uh, we can also, let's do, let's just get rid of this forest and maybe use that for a hurricane, I guess. And we'll just do X damage to a bunch of things. Turn over another forest, okay. Then we'll flip over this card in our hand and we see a hurricane again. So I guess we'll just do that again. Let's hit that forest. We'll cast that hurricane. We got that out of our hand. And then we can um, put this card in that pile. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a Wheel of Fortune. That might be pretty good. Um, we need red mana though. So we'll draw one, two, three. And whoops, I don't know what I did there. How did I do? Okay, so take three cards, two, three like that. And the top one, you flip over. Perfect, I got it. Okay. Um, we are going to, let's put this also. I think that, you know, you have the seven stacks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think you always, maybe you don't always have to put cards there. Maybe you just clear them. Anyway, we'll, check that out so we have a mountain let's go ahead and cast this mountain from our hand i think is what no let's cast the one from the playing field here um that is going to let's just cast another mana flare so we have two mana flares that turns over another mountain let us let's use that mountain for a fireball, we're gonna fireball everybody. Maybe just uh, somebody. Whoa. Um, so we have a wild growth and a juggernaut. Let us cast. Um, let's go ahead and let's use this forest. That'll cast this Juggernaut, I think. And we'll untap that. We got another Mana Flare. Let's play this Mountain. Put that Mana Flare over there. And then we'll do, this card is a Fork. So we need some, we'll flip this over. That's a Mountain, so I think, uh, I don't know, we'll use this Mountain for a Lightning Bolt. Uh, let's just say maybe it has extra mana. I'm not really sure. We'll just go ahead and fork that lightning bolt there. Then we need three more cards. Turning over the top card, we'll put uh, it as a forest. So let's cast, let's use that forest for a regrowth. The regrowth is going to get something from our graveyard to our hand. So let's uh, let's regrow the soul ring. I think that seems pretty good. So now we have a soul ring in our hand. What else can we do? I don't know. We might be stuck. We don't have any land. I think that's a problem. Um. I don't know. Let's let's just draw three more cards and see what we got here. So one, two, three. Now we got giant growth. Llanowar Elves, Fireball, uh, Soul Ring. Anyway, so we need this forest. Uh, let's use that forest for wild growth. And then we'll um, overturn that card. And yeah, so I'm guessing that's kind of like where you'd get stuck in solitaire. Like you don't have any mana cards. You can't cast, you know, this lightning bolt and then all these cards kind of get stuck in your in your so basically it's a, a non-successful solitaire I, th I think that's how it works because we just or we'd run out of cards and not be able to solve the puzzle of getting all the cards in the stack 
up to this little graveyard. I don't know, let me know what you think. I've got another idea that I think I'm gonna try out in my next video. Um, maybe we're just, the 40 card decks isn't possible. Maybe you need a 60 card deck with a lot, like 24 lands in it. I'm not really sure, but that was an interesting experiment on Solitaire Magic. It's certainly something you could do to like pass time on an airplane. Um, I might not be reading the rules 100% correctly, so if you wanna check the wizard's link in the description and reread those for me and let me know uh, if I'm doing anything wrong, that'd be great. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and I'll probably try to put you know at least a video up a day. I'll try to do more of these in the future. Um, but definitely give it a like if you liked it. Uh, let me know if there's ways to improve this. I could probably try Solitaire with a different deck too and see if that makes a difference. But I thought I'd give it a shot. What do you think? Uh, let me know. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.